cooking with Mo. Today we're going to be making um, what I call my Simply Delicious um, Strawberry Shortcake. I call it that because it is a very simple recipe, very simple recipe. It's kind of like a semi-homemade recipe, but it is so good and you really can't tell that it begins from a box cake. I do add a couple of um, other ingredients to make it seem more like homemade. I do have a from scratch recipe. If you want to see that, go ahead and shoot me a comment down in the description box below and I'll be happy to upload that for you. But I think that this video or this recipe is very quick and simple and it tastes just as good and in my opinion a little bit better. So. We're going to go ahead and get started. I am going to tell you what ingredients that we're going to need and then I'm going to go ahead and put it together for you right quick. So first you're going to start off with Duncan Hines Strawberry um, Supreme Cake Mix. And you're going to need a box of vanilla pudding. Jello pudding is what I use, but you don't have to use the Jello brand. Can use whatever brand store brand or whatever you're going to need four room temperature large eggs I use brown eggs is what I prefer you are going to need one cup of water one third cup of vegetable oil uh, you'll need some vanilla um, a teaspoon of vanilla some baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder. This is one of the ingredients, one of the extra ingredients that you add that's not in the cake mix, you know. Um, a teaspoon of baking powder. I am going to be adding about probably two teaspoons of strawberry extract. You're going to need one half cup of sugar, white granulated sugar one cup of all-purpose flour or cake flour whichever you prefer but I've used I'm using all-purpose and an additional half cup of water is what you'll need and I believe that is it and let me say this when measuring your wet and dry ingredients please always use a liquid measuring cup. Liquid measuring cups look more like this. They have the numbers on the side. Some of them are glass with the red numbers. You know, the numbers may be a different color, but they're always in this form, either plastic or glass. This is a liquid measuring cup. It's used for measuring wet ingredients. When you, you, when you measure dry ingredients, you always use a dry measuring cup which looks like this. One of my main pet peeves is to see someone baking and measuring with the wrong types of tools or whatever. Um, and when you're measuring your, you're using your spoons, you know, teaspoon, tablespoon, things like that, you need measuring spoons, not the types of spoons that you eat with. You know, a teaspoon, that you stir your tea with is not the teaspoon that you measure a teaspoon, you know, like a teaspoon of baking soda or a teaspoon of um, um, this stuff right here, <laughs> um, vanilla or whatever. It's just not, that's not what you do. Baking has to be very precise when you're baking. When you're cooking, you can pretty much do whatever you know you don't have to measure out things when you're cooking but when you're baking it needs to be precise or you'll end up messing up something and I promise you that so we're going to just go ahead and add these ingredients and these don't have to be um, put in separately for this particular recipe, everything can just go in the pot. Everybody just jump in the pot. And then we'll mix it all 
together. So that first was the cake mix. This is the jello pudding, the vanilla pudding. I tried to find some strawberry pudding. I think strawberry would be good, but I don't guess they make it because I can't find it. I might try to find some online or something like that, but we're going to put in the four eggs, the water. Go ahead and add this water to the vegetable oil. Again, that was one third cup of vegetable. And I will list the all of the ingredients down below. This is the sugar, the one half cup sugar, the one cup of flour, all purpose. Got your teaspoon. teaspoon of baking powder and you want to level that off like that you want to always level your your uh, measurements unless the recipe calls for a heaping tablespoon of something you want to always or heaping teaspoon of something you want to always level it off and your vanilla teaspoon of that and then we're going to do since this is a strawberry shortcake we're going to do two teaspoons of that good strawberry extract okay and that is it that's everybody is in the pool so we're going to go over here to the mixer and mix everything up. Now for this stand mixer, I am supposed to be using a paddle attachment, but I lost my paddle attachment and I haven't been able to order another one yet. So this whipping attachment will do the job it'll get everything mixed up but i guess i better plug it up guess i better plug that up but it's not gonna work is it all right start off slow and then you can increase it This needs to mix about a minute and a half to two minutes. You kind of want it to get um, as smooth as possible. I'm going to mix it for about a minute and then I'm going to scrape down the sides and then continue mixing for about another minute. So I hope you guys are doing well today. It's kind of late. I'm, I always bake late at night. I don't know why. But I do. Okay. It's been about a minute. Let's turn this off and drop this. And scrape down the sides a little bit. When they make strawberry shortcake, they use a yellow cake 
base and then do the whipped cream and the strawberries on top of that but I like to make a strawberry <laughs> strawberry shortcake it just tastes better to me that's you know my opinion but people seem to like it In about a minute and let's go ahead and take this out and I like to get everything off of my beater I just I don't know I've gotten in trouble by some of my friends they say they glad I ain't got no grandkids cuz I don't leave nothing on the beater or in the bowl or on the spoon or nothing for the kids to lick. But I just, I can't do it. I don't know. Okay, let's go over here. You don't have to spray this pan. Um, one, because it's going to be served right out of the pan. And two, because it has the oil in it. And it's not really going to be sticking. I hope this pan isn't too big. I'm making this cake for... Um, my pastor's appreciation dinner and I'm praying that the pan that I got isn't too too big because I wanted to make big cake Here go my OCD behind. Well, I'm not really OCD, but I am OCD about leaving cake batter in the in the pan, in the bowl. I mean, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and spread that out a little bit. And you always want to tap your cake about three times. And it's going to be, it's okay if this isn't too full because we still have to add our strawberries and whipped cream and all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and the oven is set on 350. I'm going to go ahead and place this in the oven. This is going to take approximately 30 minutes to cook. And um, When you start to smell your cake, you can go ahead and check your cake. <clears throat> I got some green beans going right here too. Look at that. Yeah, them green beans for the um for the pastor's appreciation too. Anyway, <laughs> back to the cake. When you start to smell your cake, you can go ahead and check it because it's probably either done or close to being done. And if your timer has not gone off yet, you can just check it maybe by um, using a toothpick, stick it in the middle to check for doneness. If the toothpick comes out wet, then the cake is not done. And you want to go ahead and let it stay in there for probably about another five minutes or so or until your timer goes off, depending on how much time is left on there. If it comes out clean, then your cake is done and you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and let that cook. I'm going to set my timer for 30 minutes. And we're going to let that cook. When it comes out, we're going to, I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll go ahead and dress it and uh, we'll let it cool. 
and get the strawberries and whipped cream on top and everything like that. So just give me a couple of minutes and we will be right back. All right, love y'all. All right, so the cake is finished and what I did when we, um, when I took the cake out of the oven, I took a skewer and just stuck it down in the middle of the cake to make sure it came out clean and it did and so the cake is finished and you can see it's nice and moist and soft okay so what we're going to do now is i cut my cake up into serving size pieces and then i put on the strawberries um the sliced strawberries in their own juices and they are sweet and then i'll put the whipped cream and then, and then decorate the top with some fresh strawberries so we're going to go ahead and cut the cake up and i do this just so that all of those juices and everything can get down into all throughout the cake And when they go to um, to serve the cake, it'll be a little bit easier. To serve, since they don't actually, they don't normally cut the cake like this. They just go in with a spoon. Okay, so I have that cut up. It's about 30 pieces. So you can say that this is serve. Let's see how many, one, two, three. Okay, this is actually 35 pieces. Yeah, this is actually 35 pieces. The other one that I cut up was 30. So, it'll serve actually about, uh, let's just say 30 to 35 people. So, go ahead and pour all of this on. And this is... Um, a bowl like this which is 16 ounces it's a bowl like this and a half for this particular so for two cakes I bought three of these containers and I split up the third one because you don't want too much because then your cake is going to be soggy and you want it to be soft and moist and juicy but not soggy. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some foil over this and put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for approximately an hour and a half, maybe two hours. But I'm going to let that chill, let this chill so that the um, the flavors can get down into the cake and then I'll come back with the topping which is the um, the whipped cream and the fresh strawberries so I'll see you guys in a little bit okay so here we are now to finish up the, um, the strawberry uh, shortcake and let me briefly tell y'all how crazy I am so right now I'm at my church in our kitchen um, like I said, today is our, I'm making this cake for our pastor's appreciation. Well, I left my Cool Whip sitting on the table last night, forgot to put it in the refrigerator, and when I got up this morning to try to finish up the cake, the Cool Whip was melted. Yes, it was melted. So, I had to go this morning after I got to church and get some more Cool Whip, but of course that was frozen. So, I had to wait for this to thaw out. Everybody's out of church. They're probably getting ready to eat. And luckily, I brought dessert. So, um, yeah, they'll at least get their dessert. So, anyway, to go ahead and finish up your 
um, strawberry shortcake. As you can see, I you can see that you um, how I cut the um, the cake up and earlier in the video, and I've poured the strawberries on top with the juice, sliced strawberries and juice. So we pray in that this is gonna be thawed enough to spread and I don't know. So this isn't exactly gonna be perfect. But it is going to be good. And we're going to do the best we can. And I want you to accept my sincerest apologies. Sorry. <laughs> For Except my sincerest apologies for this being a pretty much jacked up video. But it's going up anyway because life happens. And that was my brother-in-law. Well, not my brother-in-law, but my brother in Christ, Peter. It just came climbing through the window. <laughs> Cause I locked the door so that I could try to finish this up right quick without any interruptions. But I just need to hurry up. Now this isn't gonna be the best the best looking cake. I do apologize. And again, I apologize for any commotion that you hear in the back. I am rushing. And unfortunately, I'm not the best editor yet. So, gonna see all of this um all of these bops and bubbles and boo-boos but like I said life happens and this is a good way to show you that even if you make a mistake can persevere and still turn out a bomb dessert or dish or whatever it is you're making. So, yeah, some of these it's got some little frozen parts in there, but. By the time it's served, it'll be, it'll be better. Okay. And I'm going to take this glove off. My hands are clean, but it's easier to put these strawberries on without that glove. So these are fresh, fresh cut strawberries. Just pull the arm. The leafy part off of it and then slice them in half. After you wash them, of course. And since strawberry season is really past, these are pretty small.
and they are also a little bit tart but the cake is sweet and the whipped cream is sweet so the tartness of the strawberries actually ends up giving a really nice contrast to the cake up with the foil and um, we'll get it served okay so again y'all thank y'all so much for watching and I do thank y'all so much for watching and I do apologize for all of these little mistakes and interruptions and everything um, next video will be better I promise like I said, I would list all of the ingredients for this cake in the um, um, the description box below. If you have any comments or suggestions of anything that you might want me to do, go ahead and list that down in the comment section. I would love for you to like this video. If you do give me a thumbs down on this video and you don't like it, I completely understand. I'm not sure how much I like it myself, but I am going to do better. And like I said, um, like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anyone and everyone that you may that you think may benefit from it or would like to try this recipe. And again, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video. Peace out, y'all. Bye bye.